Well, for those of you who are sick of dollars and trying to make sense of the economy, there's a new currency in the works. Bitcoin is the digital cryptocurrency that has stunned the markets and garnered the attention of the government. It is now worth more than $1 billion, but this payment method isn't without its critics. Just last week, the Department of Homeland Security actually closed Mt. Gox. That is a system people use to exchange bitcoins into legal tender like dollars or vice versa. The shutdown of Mt. Gox has also created a divide within the bitcoin community itself. Should the currency actually try to become more legitimate in the eyes of the government by jumping through regulatory hoops, or should it steer toward the original mission of anonymity? Well, our financial team, uh, Prime Interest, was actually in San uh, Jose at the McHenry Convention Center for the Bitcoin 2013 uh, conference. And Prime Interest producer Bob English joins me now with more. Yes. Hi there, Bob. Thank you so much for joining me. So let's start off by talking about this this Mount uh, Mount uh, excuse Gox. Mount Gox um, controversy. What happened? Sure. Um, and Trish, I'd like to clarify. Um, they're still up and running, but what the what the uh, Department of Homeland Security investigator did was they shut down one of their bank accounts accounts and seized it. And what Mt. Gox does is it's an interface in the Bitcoin world between the payment system of U.S. dollars and euros and Australian dollars and bitcoins. So if you want to get some bitcoins um, and you have currency, that's one way that you can get them is through this exchange. And the feds came in and they basically shut it down because they said they were not registered as a money transfer agent. And uh, when Mt. Gox, the, the president, filled out the little forms for Wells Fargo in North Carolina, he just didn't check that box. And what that bodes for the rest of the community is if you're not properly registered, um, you're just not going to be able to operate your uh, similar exchange. And there are several other com competing exchanges. All right, and let's talk about this divide within the Bitcoin community that I had mentioned earlier. Can you set up the two sides for me? Well, I don't know if it's so much of a divide, but there are the early adopters who are very enthusiastic about Bitcoins. And now that it's gained popularity, um, you have people coming in, private equity groups, venture capitalists, and there's a lot of money to be made. And so that uh, sometimes it's a little bit uh, suspicious when somebody comes in perhaps and with a uh, 10 million dollars and says I want to throw this at a project um, but everybody's actually working together pretty closely at least from what I saw at the conference uh, everybody there was enthusiastic that we were there for instance uh, from RT covering it uh, there was very little media presence in terms of television so uh, I would say overall it was very uh, very warm welcome now, I understand that this, uh, co this company, this Bitcoin, has actually gone through two steps uh, forward, one step forward and two steps back. Uh, numerous occasions, do you think that there's going to be a splintering within the Bitcoin community? I think the problem that I think you're talking about is the volatility in the price itself. And there have been a lot of, uh, a lot of gyrations. The price went from just a few cents uh, over a couple of years, and then it spiked up to $254 per Bitcoin. Then it crashed to 54 Now it's at 125 or something therein. I think that's one of the major concerns. And that's one of, that is perhaps the Achilles heel of Bitcoins and these cryptocurrencies is that they can either be manipulated or they have that great price volatility to them. Well, as we understand it also, uh, Bitcoin is also has some competition. One of them is Ripple. What are the differences between Bitcoin and, and Ripple? And could Ripple be a big competitor for Bitcoin? Sure. Uh, Ripple is actually compatible with Bitcoins, but they're also a competitor. Bitcoin started out as a currency and kind of became a payment system. Ripple takes the opposite ap approach where it's a payment system and they're also going to have their own competing currency. But like I said, Ripple will be compatible with a multitude of uh, digital currencies as well as real currencies. And that's one of the uh, groups that I said was a little bit controversial because Unlike bitcoins, which are mined over time and there is going to be a fixed limit, this Ripple currency is going to have a fixed limit too, but it's all mined up front. It's all issued up front, and they're retaining 50% of it for themselves and to pay out developers. And what you would expect, a business has to pay its bills, right? But that's causing a little bit of controversy within the Bitcoin community and the cryptocurrency community. Now let's talk about what it's going to take for Bitcoin to become a, a more traditional currency, a more widely accepted currency. What are the regulatory, regulatory hoops that it's going to have to jump through? Who is it going to have to please, and are the people willing to do that? That was a major theme at Bitcoin. After Mt. Gox, people were very like hyper aware 
that they're going to have to comply with these new rules, and they were very vigilant in telling us that they want to comply with these, whatever regulations that they're going to have to. Um, one currency exchange that competes with Mt. Gox in particular has registered successfully in 30 states, so they're operating under the letter of the law, and they want to continue to do that. Um, so in the future, I think they're very concerned about having the proper representation on the Hill, and they're going to be legal as, as best they can. And uh, let's talk about the mood of Bitcoin 2013. Now that the currency has gained so much attention and so much steam, do people see it as selling out? This is, after all, a, a thing, something that's run off of uh, people's interest, after all. We have just a very short amount of time. Um, I, like I said, the mood was very enthusiastic. Uh, there was a comic book convention next door. And so there was, a, you know, Spider-Man was passing by, Superman was passing by. Everybody seems to love Bitcoins. All right. Bob English, RT producer with uh, Prime Interest. Thank you so much for joining us.